stand for the call to worship. <coughs> Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy, Happy are those who keep the decrees of the Lord and walk in God's ways. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous commandments. I will forever gain wisdom as you teach me your laws. Let us worship God.
It's great to see you all again, and it's always a privilege and a pleasure to worship with you, and thank you for passing along prayers and thoughts for Sarah Brown and her family, my wife, that's my wife Jenny's mom, and she was a friend, a real friend of many people here, and that line goes back through the Calme family and, and other folks uh, that are friends and, and that love this church and love you all, and she certainly did, and so we wanted to pass that back to you as well. In that spirit, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's pass the peace of Christ to each other. are the cards that you and Wendy made for us, and they are beautiful. We really appreciate it. And do you know, on Valentine's Day, I spend a lot of time looking for the exact right card for your aunt and my wife's dream. And you spend a lot of time making the right card for people that you care for, don't you? And you know, Jenny, she really likes reading how much I love her. But you know what? I'm going to tell you a secret. She likes it even more when I show her how much I love her. Now, what are some ways that you can show someone that you love? Giving a hug is a big one. Wendy, can you think of a way that you can show somebody you love them? All right. 
<laughs> well, some of the things that, that you can do to show somebody you love them is you can spend time with them. That was number one. That was number one on my list. You can take them out for dinner. You can wash the dishes. You can help with the chores for them. You can get Wendy or Ruby ready for bed and put them to sleep. And so the important thing here is, sure, my wife likes it when I tell her I love her, but it means even more when I show her I love her. Now, I want to share a secret with you. Jesus is the same way. He likes when we come to church and we tell him how much we love him. We do that every Sunday. Every day we pray, we go through uh, telling him how much we love him and everything. But, he'd much rather we show him how much we love him. So I want to share this Bible verse with you. It's John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will obey what I command. Now you're asking, what does Jesus command? Well, that's, that's what I have to keep going for you. It's in the Bible. You can open it up, and you can read his teachings and follow his word. Okay. And so one of the things that I want to do for you all today So today some of the people in our congregation have been showing their love all uh, February and part of January with the Super Bowl of Carrie. And what that does is that helps needy people by giving them the resources that they, that they need. And so some of those are canned goods and paper towels and different things. And so I made a bag for each of them. And on your all's way upstairs, I want you all to take those over to the Super Bowl of Karen. And I want you all to vote for the team that you all want to win. And it would really make me feel better if it was the Eagles because I don't like the Chiefs. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> offering um, that will be taken up, a special offering, it can be today, it can be next Sunday or the following, February 12th, 19th, or 26th. That's one option. In your bulletin, I placed um, the uh, earthquake uh, relief, the Presbyterian disaster relief, and if you specifically want it to go to um, <coughs> Turkey and Syria, um, please note on there that it's DR six nines and ST so that it goes to that Syria and Turkey disaster relief. There is also a QR code if you want to scan it. So you can send it directly to the uh, Presbyterian Church uh, or you can drop it off here. Um, and on that memo line, make sure you do write the DR, the six nines, the ST, and it will go directly to Syria. If you do not add that, um, do not worry. It will go to the general disaster relief fund that the Presbytery handles. Thank you.
Please join me in praying the prayer for illumination. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that hearing may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. First scripture reading this morning is from the book of Psalms. Psalms 119, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Our New Testament reading today is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to the count, his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The story goes that an old train was moving along an old branch line slowly through the countryside when it suddenly lurched to a stop. The only passenger on this old three-car train was a business person on his way to the next town. He rose quickly to his feet and hurried to the conductor. Why have we stopped, he demanded. I'm a salesman and I have an appointment in less than an hour in the next town. Surely this old train can make it through a pasture. The conductor just smiled. Don't worry about it, sir. Just a cow on the tracks. We got to wait her out. The salesman turned around, went back to his seat, fuming and fidgeting all the way until the train began to creep forward again. And about 10 minutes later, it stopped again. This time the conductor found the salesman. Now don't worry about it, sir. We'll be on our way in just a moment. It's a temporary delay. And the salesman says, well, what, what happened? Did we catch up with the cow again? <laughs> well, what the salesman didn't know was that this particular train that followed this particular schedule had adjustments built in to the schedule. Adjustments for things like cows on the tracks and temporary delays. Well, the salesman made his appointment. 
but he was worn to a near frazzle by all his worry and fretting and frustration and concern. And that old story reminded me of the things that we do with time. We worry about it, which the salesman certainly did. We can think about having too much time, not having enough time, not having enough on our hands, how we spend it, where and with whom we spend our time with, what kind of quality time we have left, for all the importance, important people in our lives and the important things in our lives. How quickly time goes by and suddenly there's kids in school and there's grandkids and great grandkids and we say things like, where did the time go? And the list goes on and on, you know, just think about our vocabulary, our language with the clock. The clicking and passing of time it gets into so many conversations and thoughts. We waste time, we spend time, we beat time, we listen to sports radio on talk time radio. We make good time. We give time outs. Sometimes I think adults need time outs, but that's a different story. We get places in time. We have time to spare. We spend time together. We watch time. We spend too much time on screens. And the list goes on and on, of course. And this time, by the way, it's the only time we really have, this time now, we're not too far past the holidays, too far past Christmas, too far past all the promises that were made about that time and about how that time is going to change all time. when a baby was delivered to a hurting world in due time. And we expect, maybe we expect too much, to change after that time. Because you know our workplaces, our families, our communities still have the same struggles they did after the holidays. They're still there waiting for us. The deadlines are still there. Our timelines are still there. People will still be battling abuse and addiction after that time. So we, we almost expect that time to make this time different. Well, what are we expecting, really, for the outside world to change? Where are we looking? For our environments, our environments to be so radically different that we finally will feel so much better? Rather than think about changing from within. Peter Gomes, an Episcopal priest and former Harvard professor, put it this way on that special time after those holiday times. And even though it doesn't really feel like February out there, it's really not that far from those special times. Gomes says it's harder in February and January than it is in April or July to go back to the altar of our work, whatever that work is, feeling that something has happened to us and that we, not our circumstances, are redeemed and born new. But that is precisely what we're called to do, he says. Of course, he says, the world hasn't changed and our duties haven't changed. The things that we've avoided or put off still wait for us. They wait for us with a kind of grim determination that shadows the magic of that season. And he says the magic of that season is way too important to play with trivial things like our schedules and our circumstances. What is transformed, he finishes, what is capable of transformation so that where we left off is not the same place as where we now begin is, of course, 
ourselves, our communities. For we have come from an encounter with the world of the possible in the midst of the impossible. How we do that, we return to ourselves and our circumstances after bearing witness, you know, to strange and mighty acts. Acts that demand that we never look at the sky the same way again. Never. And through the power and grace of God, the transformation that is possible when we, we look at those hints in Ephesians from our reading, that it's possible happens inside each of us. If we want, if we desperately want the world to be more loving and accepting, just as the babe in the manger would have us, then we have to be those things. With all their possibilities, we have to be more loving. We just can't be people that look at the world the same way after that baby has already come into the world, as Ephesians points out, in the fullness of time. If that's the case, then every person that's new that comes through those doors, every encounter you have, every mission task, every minute of worship is an acceptance of God's possibilities and fulfillment of what our reading refers to as living for the praise of God's glory. We heard it from the choir earlier in the, the early songs. The praise of God's glory. Now if you think about the most content people that you know, just think for a moment. The most content people you know, my hunch is they have as one of their traits taking time for what it is, a gift to be lived. Moment by moment, day by day, and these content folks among us, I think, know something else too. I think they know something about patience. Someone once said that patience is the ability to keep your motor, motor idling when you feel like grinding your gears. Keep your motor idling when you feel like grinding or stripping your gears. Time itself, friend or foe, wasting away or living in the moment as a gift. After Sarah's death this week, my father-in-law, I ran across a couple of readings I wanted to share with you, and it reminded me about time, about the gift of time. This is from a Navajo prayer, a Navajo text. Beauty is before me. Beauty is behind me, above me, below me. All hovers the beautiful. I'm surrounded by it. I'm immersed in it. In my youth, I'm aware of it. And in old age, I shall walk quietly the beautiful trail. In beauty, it has begun. In beauty, it is ended. And one more reading about time. You know the little quip about grinding your ears? I just mentioned? This one's called In Patience. And Have Patience. Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart. And try to lose and love Ultimately, the questions themselves. Don't search for answers, which could not be given to you now, because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday far into the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. Thought those were interesting readings. So, Ephesians is concerned with who's in the middle of time. 
And God, as the reading points out, has chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world. If we think about time in a linear way, and most of us do, God has chosen us before the foundation of the world. That's our past. God has made known to us through Christ and forgives our sins and calls us children of God now. That's our present. And finally, the reading points out, God has a plan for the fullness of time in Jesus Christ. That's our future. The future, as Ephesians reminds us, by the way, where all things, all things are brought up into the life of God through Christ. <clears throat> or, as some Bible translation says, added up together. Added up together in Christ. So somewhat fresh into a new year with uncertainty ahead and, and tomorrow probably not feeling a lot different than today to many of us, than any Monday morning in October or July. It's a kind of comfort. That comfort or assurance is here with us today. And when we celebrate at table with each other in a community of faith, we, we do talk about that in linear terms, our past, present, and future. We proclaim words of remembrance, and we do that every week in worship, if we gather as a community of faith. We affirm the presence of God in Christ now because we need a Savior now and presence now. And we proclaim the Lord's death, as the old words go, until He comes again. Past, present, future. It's like the biblical author is telling us that all chaos and confusion and meaning about time and events has been redeemed in Christ. It is Christ who was present when the world was made, and it will be, by the grace of God, Christ who will be there face to face with us when the world really does end. And I'm acutely aware that the world really does end for us when we die. That's the end of the world for us. All things gathered up. All things gathered up. And you know, we act like sometimes we have a corner on the market with chaos and confusion and the world's event as we scroll through our feeds or we open the newspaper. My goodness, they're suffering. And they're suffering so much just this week across our planet. And we, we assume sometimes that we have a corner on the market when it comes to chaos and confusion and pain. Well, we have to remember that special time that Jesus was born into. Because he was born into a world of uncertainty, of chaos. I mean, the family had to flee for their lives and people were murdered all around him because of him. Chaos and confusion and uncertainty. And finding meaning and, and finding meaning in God that God has reached to us in Christ it's the task any of us face each day, whether it's February or the day after Christmas or July, New Year or not. G.G. Finley, in an old, old commentary on the letter to the Ephesians, wrote about Christ bringing order to chaos, even to the point, through Christ, realigning the universe, the entire universe. Finley writes that the times may point this way and that, but he sees it this way. And his words are, there is no place in the future of things without Christ. He is the potent germ of life eternal that has been introduced into, into the world's chaos. He is the rallying point of blessing and peace. Finally, as Finley remarks, Christ is the author and finisher of this grand restoration. To that God be all honor 
and glory now and forever. Amen. Will you please stand if you're able and say what it is we believe by using the Apostles' Creed and you'll find an insert for that in your bullet. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and dead and buried. He is ascended into heaven.
a small period, and if you, when you hear the phrase, let us pray to the Lord, your part, I would invite you to come back with, Lord, have mercy. So I'll say, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, your mercy. Perfect. Oh my gosh, you're so much better than my class. I have to deal with every week. <laughs> uh, let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer to God. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the peace that you can give us and do give us from above, for your loving kindness, for our salvation, for this time together, for those that are here in our midst, those that could not be here. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the world, we know there is suffering, Turkey and Syria, just about every corner, it seems, of this planet. We pray for relief workers that are on their way, that are on the ground, for those that are suffering in silence, for families that are grieving, indeed, ultimately, for the well-being of all your people. Let us pray to the Lord. For this gathering of the faithful, for everyone who offers their worship and praise, words, thoughts, prayers, a kind word, a gesture, a wave, musical gifts, let us pray to the Lord. For those that lead us, for leaders of towns, villages, states, this nation, all who are in authority, Grant them wisdom, patience, kindness. Grant the same things for all those who live under their authority and under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this good earth which you have given us, for the wisdom and will to conserve it, for those that are traveling by land or water or air, for the aged, the widowed, the orphaned, for those that are sick and suffering, those that are wrestling under the weight and shackles of addiction or mental illness, for the poor and the oppressed, and for those that are just desperately looking for work, for prisoners or captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the joys, the concerns, the prayers, the thoughts that have been lifted up in the midst of this community this morning. For those that reside still in our hearts and our minds. For deliverance in times of affliction, for strife and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all those that have died in the hope of the resurrection and are at rest, and those that are left caring for those who they love and who love them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Gracious God, you've given us this time, this grace, to make our common prayers known to you. And you've promised that when two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there. Fulfill now, our Lord, our Lord, our desires, our petitions, our concerns, our worries, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting, we pray all these things in the name of the one who taught his closest followers to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time in our service, a time of giving, 
We can do good and share what we have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
Oh, whether we waste time, spend time, too much screen time, beat time, all time and all things are gathered up to him through Jesus Christ. And now may the love of God, the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with those you love, and even with those on this earth whom no one loves. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you.